What is going on guys, Death here with another Monster Hunter World video and today we're going to be breaking down even more Iceborne information. Now, the developer diary number 2 just dropped and there's a ton of things you might have missed. I know a lot of us don't have time to watch an hour long video, so I decided to break down the best things from the developer diary into small segments. With that being said, this particular video is going to break down the movesets of the monsters coming to Iceborne. Glavinus, Brachideus, Barioth, and even some of the new Elder Dragons like Volcana and Namil. So if you haven't seen this, make sure to stay tuned. Now, I know this is just a summary of the developer diary, but as I said before, not everybody has time to watch the whole livestream. So without further ado, let's get Moving right along, on to it. I think it's time we talk about the monsters that appeared in the trailer. First of all, a fan favorite, Brachideos. It made its first appearance in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate when it was featured as the flagship monster of the game. Brachideos is a monster with hard blue shelling, but do you see the glowing green parts at the tip of its legs and on its head? That's actually slime. This slime's special characteristic is that when it sticks to a surface, it undergoes a chemical reaction, and then it explodes. Brachideos has a symbiotic relationship with this slime. Brachideos has the same design as it did before, but we've added a few new moves. Depending on the move, the slime explodes at different time intervals. These new attributes can pose a challenge even for those players who think they've mastered the Brachideos fight in the past. So I think all players are going to have a real good time fighting this monster. And it seems that sometimes your feet can get stuck. That's right. The slime can cause this effect as well. This time around, you'll need to be extra careful of your positioning when engaging Brachideus, because it's very much designed for Monster Hunter World. The next monster is Barioth. Barioth is a monster that first appeared in Monster Hunter Tri. It's a white flying wyvern that can move quickly, even on ice. It's one of the more distinctive monsters. It uses its spikes as hooks to propel itself across the ice. It's a monster that has complete freedom in its movements. For its moves, we have reimagined this monster's unique tempo, which means that its speed fluctuates between stillness and quick movement. And as a part of Monster Hunter World, Barius can make use of the environment to its advantage. For example, there's a move where it can utilize walls when attacking. At first, taking down Barioth may seem like a daunting task, but if you strategize and aim to break its body parts, it becomes a much more manageable hunt. As you know, in the last trailer for Iceborne, we introduced Glavinus to everyone. And this time, we're excited to announce a Glavinus subspecies, Acidic Glavinus. And we'd like to share some details about this monster. This is the debut of this subspecies in the series. As you know, one of the most distinguishable features of Glavinus is its tail. Acidic Glavinus is a subspecies of Glavinus that demonstrates its adaptation to the harsh environment of the Rotten Vale. While the regular species of Glavinus is a monster that was created with a greatsword in mind, Acidic Glavinus is a brute wyvern that was created with the image of a longsword. Its tail is embedded with highly corrosive crystals. Its tail cuts a large swath that will cause a hunter's defense to decrease if they're hit with the tail's plastic properties. While you're busy maneuvering to avoid this attack, the monster then sharpens its tail into a katana-like form. And this time, it will attack you quickly and with precision. At this point, if your defense is weakened, this monster is going to deliver some nasty damage. So while you try your best to avoid the defensive debuff, you'll have to play smart and consider your positioning while its tail is sharpened. It's going to be a fun fight that'll have you thinking on your feet. When the tail's sharpened, this monster's in its most powerful state. The aspect of trying to figure out how to outlast this state is part of the monster's design that differs from the regular species. Today, we formally introduced Acidic Glavinus to everyone and made some of its details public. But there are other subspecies that will appear in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, so there's still more to come. Next up, we'd like to take this opportunity to discuss the scene that appears at the very end of the trailer. We think everyone is eager to know what's going on here. This monster is brand new and is making its debut in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. The name of the monster is... Namio! We can't go into too much detail, but maybe we can quickly touch upon this monster? 
Namiel's an elder dragon that can manipulate water. We wanted to expand on the elder dragon theme that was prevalent in Monster Hunter World. As an example, Velkana's an ice-themed elder dragon. It was one of our goals to create elder dragons with various characteristics. This time, we wanted to challenge ourselves to depict a water-themed elder dragon. I think we designed a monster that's going to be really fun to fight, and we hope people are eager to face it. Next, we'd like to talk about Velkana, the flagship monster of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Until now, we haven't explained much about Velkana, but now we'd like to take this opportunity to go in-depth about this monster and share some details. Velkana commands the ice. You could say that it's a monster that can utilize ice in a very unique way. It's a monster whose breath is a distinctive trait. Velkana actually exhales chilled air. When this frigid air comes into contact with various objects, it causes ice pillars to form suddenly. An important aspect of dealing with this monster is considering how to use these ice pillars to your advantage during combat. As you can see from the scenes in the trailer, Velkana shrouds itself in an armor of ice. When Velkana is covered in ice, it's in a state where it can exercise its power to the fullest extent. Trying to neutralize this power will factor into how the hunter has to maneuver when facing this monster. By attacking its layers of ice, you can shear them away, and by doing so, you can mitigate Velkana's command over the ice. Keeping this in mind when you are in this monster's vicinity should provide you with a clue for defeating it.